let's uh, go ahead and take a look at this uh, new equilibrium problem. And for this question, we have a 1.6 meter long uniform beam. So uh, this beam right here, its length is uh, 1.6 meters, and it has a mass of 8 kilograms. And there's also a 24 kilogram object that is on the beam. And for this problem, we want to find the tension in both the right and left hand cables here. Okay, so this is a different kind of uh, equilibrium problem because uh, we'll, we'll be dealing with both torques and forces here. Okay, so uh, let me kind of erase some of these colors here and we'll start off by drawing a free body diagram. So uh, since the beam here, so this beam is uh, 1.6 meters long, uh, since it has a mass of 8 kilograms, it has a center of gravity, right? So um, we'll put that somewhere in the middle here. So this is the center of gravity here and I'll label that uh, FG. And uh, the 24 kilogram object, it also has a mass. So uh, I'll call this maybe FG2. Uh, I'll call this FG1. And then um, the ropes, um, the cables also have forces acting on them. So there's a force tension over here. And there's also a force tension over here on the left hand side. So I'll call this force tension 1. And I'll, and I'll call this force tension 2. Okay, so now that we've uh, drawn the free body diagram, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, apply the concept of rotational equilibrium. So um, what that really kind of means is there's going to be torques. Um, we have to calculate torques in this particular problem here. So uh, we'll have a torque here. So that's torque number one. This is torque number two. And I'll label this as torque number three. Now, when we're dealing with torques, uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put my pivot point right here, the pivot. And once I put my pivot point at one of the ends, I can actually just eliminate the force that's acting on that pivot point. And I can create a rotational equilibrium expression based on that purple pivot point uh, because um, these torques are going in the clockwise direction and this torque is going in the counterclockwise direction, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a torque expression now for rotational equilibrium. So at the pivot, we know that the sum of the torques is gonna be equal to zero. And that literally means that the sum of the torques in the clockwise direction equals the sum of the torques in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so uh, on the clockwise side, I have torque one plus torque two, and in the counterclockwise direction, I have torque three. All right, and uh, the uh, general formula for a torque is gonna be force times distance plus uh, force times distance and this torque is also a force times a distance. Now we know for all these forces, uh, um, except for the one on the uh, counterclockwise direction, this force is gonna be a force tension, but uh, the forces on the clockwise direction, uh, that's basically the force of gravity, right? So uh, this force of gravity is just the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So um, the uh, mass of the, sorry, the, the, sorry the, the beam weighs eight kilograms. So we'll take eight kilograms and we'll times that by 9.80. And then we gotta figure out what the distance is. So if I go back to my original diagram here, I would say that uh, this distance right here, the center of gravity is always half of the length, right? So if the full length is 1.6 meters, then half the center of gravity is a half of that. So that's gonna be 0 0.8 meters to the pivot point. Okay, so uh, this will be uh, times this by 0 0.8 meters. Okay, and then I'll add that to the next force here. And this is the, uh, um, we need to calculate the weight of the object. So the object weighs 24 kilograms. We times that by 9.80. And then we gotta find the distance to the pivot point. And uh, if I erase this now, well, this is the distance that the uh, 24 kilogram object is from the pivot, which is exactly one meter. Okay, so this will be uh, one meter, and then I can find the force tension. So uh, this force uh, tension is really uh, uh, F force tension two, I believe, right? That's the uh, force in the cable on the right-hand side, and uh, that is approximately the full length of the beam away from the pivot point, so that's gonna be 1.6. Okay, so uh, those are all your numbers, and now you're solving a linear math equation here. So uh, you wanna solve for F T2 there, so I'm gonna pause the video here and we should be able to get the numerical answer to F the, um, the force tension in the right hand cable here. Okay, so after you do all your calculations, uh, the force in the uh, right hand cable uh, should have a value of 186.2 newtons. Okay, so uh, what, what I'm gonna do now is I'll go back to my diagram here and um, 
let me kind of just uh, erase some of the colors here. So we know the force uh, on the right hand side on this cable uh, was 186.2 newtons. And uh, finally, what we need to also do here in this particular question is we need to find the force or the uh, tension in the, this row, in this particular cable, and I'll call this FT1. So we want to find the uh, tension in the left-hand cable right over here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're done with our torques, and now we're going to move on to um, a translational equilibrium concept where we want to make sure that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm just going to erase all of this and we're going to start a brand new argument now so that we can find the force on the left-hand cable using the concept of translational equilibrium. Okay, so uh, if I just kind of uh, refocus here and uh, the concept of translational equilibrium is like this. So the sum of the forces uh, equals to zero. Now, if I look at all my forces here, uh, there's two forces going in the upwards direction and there's two forces going in the downwards direction. So we can say that the sum of the forces in the upwards direction should equal to the sum of the forces in the downwards direction. Okay, so in the upwards direction, we have the tension of the cables, FT1 plus uh, FT2. And on the forces in the, in the downwards direction, we have FG1 and FG2. Okay, so our goal now is to find this uh, the value of that variable right there, which is the tension in the left-hand cable. So since we don't know that, we'll call this FT1 plus. Now we just calculated the force on the right-hand cable there, so that was 186.2 newtons. And then on the uh, on the right-hand side, now we got to calculate the forces for our FG1 and FG2. Well, FG1 is just really mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass of the beam is eight kilograms and we times that by 9.80. Plus, then we need to find the weight of the 24 kilogram object, which, would be, which can be calculated as 24 kilograms times 9.80. Okay, and now this ensures us that all the units are now measured in, uh, in like newtons. Okay, so now we can uh, go ahead and find what FT1 is. So I'm gonna pause the video here, and uh, once I unpause the video, we should be able to find the final numerical answer for FT1. Okay, so after we do our calculations, uh, the, the tension in the left-hand cable is gonna be 127.4 newtons. And you're basically just solving a linear math equation to kind of finish off that problem. Okay, so uh, there you go. So uh, if I go back to my original diagram here, uh, this tension here would be equal to uh, 127.4 newtons. All right, and that will ensure you that the forces in the upward direction equal to the forces in the downwards direction. And we have now completed both the rotational and translational uh, equilibrium concepts to solve this particular problem. Here is another uh, equilibrium problem where we have to consider both the torques being equal to zero as well as uh, the sum of the forces being equal to zero. So it's very similar to the uh, previous problem. Uh, it looks like we have this uh, table figure here and uh, this table uh, has a mass of 1200 kilograms. So here is uh, the table here. And since it has a mass of 1200 kilograms, uh, it has a center of gravity right in the middle here. So I'll go ahead and draw the force acting on the table there and uh, we know that the table has a length of 8 plus 24 which is uh, 32 meters long and uh, there's also a object on the table there and that object has a mass of 37 uh, 3700 kilograms so 3700 kilograms here so therefore we have another force acting in the downwards direction so we'll call this FG2 now for this problem, the question states that we need to find the upward forces at the endpoints. So at the endpoints, we have support A and support B. And since those endpoints are supporting the table from falling down, uh, if I complete the free body diagram here, there's a force going in the upper direction. So I'll call this force A. And we also have another force going in the upper direction here and I'll call that force B. So uh, that's the free body diagram right there. And it's very similar to the previous problem. 
Okay, so uh, in my last problem, what I um, what we did was we did set up a torque expression here. So I will say the sum of the torques equals to zero. So this means uh, we're dealing with the concept of rotational equilibrium. And when we're dealing with rotational equilibrium, it's always good to establish a pivot point. So I'll put a pivot point right here at this end. Now, when you put a pivot point there, you can essentially just eliminate the force that's acting on that pivot point. And now you can just deal with um, the, the forces that remain. So FG1, FG2, and um, the force here at B. Okay, so at this stage, um, you should recognize that FG1 and FG, FG2, which are in the downwards directions, these two forces are going in the clockwise direction, and this upward force is going in the counterclockwise direction. So, uh, you know, there's a torque here, there's a torque there, and there's a torque there as well. So there's three torques to consider in this particular problem, and the first two torques are going in the uh, clockwise direction. So um, I'm gonna skip the uh, sum of the torques clockwise equal to the sum of the torques counterclockwise. Let's just go ahead and get into the torques right away. So torque one plus torque two equals to torque three. And the general formula for a torque is force times the distance plus the force times the distance and on this side, we also have the torque being equal to the force times the distance. Okay, so now we gotta consider all the forces here. Okay, so uh, the forces that we are, are considering on the clockwise side have to do the, with the force of gravity here. So uh, this is this force right here is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the, the, so the table here uh, has a mass of 1200 kilograms, and we times that by 9.80. And the distance here, well, the distance is the center of gravity, right? So uh, if I just kind of erase this, and we wanna find this distance right here to FG1, right? So um, to find um, that particular torque there. So uh, we know the whole uh, table has a, a length of 32 meters. So half of that is where the center of gravity is. So half of 32 is gonna be 16. So this has a distance of 16 meters from the pivot point. All right, and then we're gonna add that to the next torque here. So this uh, force right here uh, is gonna be, we're gonna be dealing with the um, object on the table, right? So um, the object on the table uh, has a mass of 3,700 kilograms and is roughly uh, eight meters from the pivot. All right, so if I translate, if I put that over here, 3,700 times 9.80, and it is eight meters from the pivot point equals to So uh, this force over here, this is actually the force acting on support B. So I'll call that F force B. And that distance is a full 32 meters from the pivot point. Okay, so now we have enough information here to solve for the missing variable, which is the force at B. And uh, we're solving another linear equation here. So I'm gonna pause the video and uh, take some time to kind of work through the calculations here and I'll show my final answer in just a bit. Okay, so uh, once you work through all the calculation, uh, the force at B that I come up with is um, 14,945 newtons. Okay, so that is the force that's being supported at support B. Uh, so what we'll do now is I'll just go back to my diagram here and um, let's just erase some of the colors here. Okay, so what we just found here is that force B, the force that support B, um, that has a value of 14,945 newtons. And the uh, second part of this particular question is that we need to go ahead and find the uh, force at support A. Okay, so now that we're dealing with forces, uh, we can move on from uh, rotational equilibrium and now go on to the concept of translational equilibrium where the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Okay, so in order to do that, let me just kind of erase all this work here. So we're done with all that, we're done. So this is all the work that you need to show to deal with the torques. And uh, now we're gonna go on to the concept of uh, translational equilibrium. So sum of the forces equals to zero. And what that really means is that the sum of the forces in the upwards direction should equal to all the forces that are going in the downwards direction. Now the forces in the upwards direction, uh, that's the force at support A plus the force at support B. 
And the forces that we are dealing with in the downwards direction have to do with the force of gravity on the table and the force of gravity on the object. Okay, so uh, we did find the force at support B and that was uh, 14,945 Newtons. And we know the mass of the table that we're dealing in this problem is 1200 kilograms times by 9.80 plus uh, the mass of the object which is 3700 and we times that by 9.80 and then finally we just have our force at support A on the left hand side there and I'm going to once again pause the video here and your um, the, the goal now is to solve for this variable which is FA highlighted in blue there and once again we're just solving a linear equation here Okay, so uh, after you complete all your calculation, uh, the answer that I get for the force at A is 33,075 33, newtons. Okay, and just kind of finish off this video here, if I just go back to the top again here, uh, we just found out, we just calculated that the force at A is uh, 33,075 newtons. Okay, so that's it for uh, this uh, video guide.